Hello, I'm David Haig, the Managing Editor of Australian Video Camera Magazine, and I'm going to introduce you to the wonderful world of virtual reality with Magic's VR Studio. As you will see, VR scenes are really easy to build and enhance, going well beyond the gaming metaphor. To get a trial copy of VR Studio, simply go to the website listed below and download it. When you hear the term virtual reality, is this what you think of? Well, if you are one of the many that thinks virtual reality, VR for short, is for hardcore gamers and not much else, you'd be very wrong. And in this tutorial, we'll be showing you how to create VR environments that are really useful. We'll be using Magic's VR Studio to build an environment, called a space in VR Studio speak, to demonstrate the attractions of the Wyambar Tall Timbers, located among the tall carry forests of southwest Western Australia. Unlike a brochure or website, a VR space built using VR Studio lets the observer actually interact with video, audio and still images. Directly in a web browser, without any additional hardware, on a mobile device or of course using a VR headset, you'll be able to look around the main bar area, the outside courtyard and barbecue, see the wine list and get more details about individual wines, perhaps hear a talk from the actual winemaker or even view an aerial vista of the vineyard the grapes came from. You will be able to see the food menu, click an item and view an image of the plated meal, and even have a VR look at the kitchen if you like. We'll add a notice board of attractions from around the area, such as the Diamond Tree, the Trout Farm and One Tree Bridge, and you'll be able to explore these in VR with video, images, music and text. To start, we'll begin an overview of the Magic's VR Studio interface, explain some basic terms and show you how to navigate around the workspace. Next. We'll show how to add VR content, labels and place links to other spaces. Finally, once we have built a space, we'll show how to package it so they can be freely distributed to others to use in websites, virtual reality viewers or VR headsets. When you first start VR Studio, you are presented with a screen offering a number of different choices. Settings allows you to change the level of quality as some older systems may not cope with high resolution when creating a VR scene. This will not affect final output. Here you can also select a control method such as a mouse or a headset. Online Tutorials is a link to some basic overview tutorials and New VRX Project is as the name suggests where you start a new project in VR Studio. Finally Open Project lets you continue working on an existing project in VR Studio. If you have an existing projects, these will also be displayed with the project name and the date last opened. Clicking New VRX Project opens a new screen to enter a file name and shows the last folder you used and any other projects in that folder. A quick note here, once you have reached this point, you are already inside VR Studio's 3D space, so your mouse will operate a little differently. For example, while simply moving the mouse pointer will do nothing, Clicking and holding while dragging will change your orientation in 3D space and the mouse wheel will zoom in and out. So if it appears trying to enter a name for your new project is not working, try zooming in a little to make the dialog box bigger. As you type, the name will start from the centre of the dialog box field. After you have entered the file name for your new project, the screen that appears has two options, leave this project and return to the previous main screen or add a new space. We'll click Add a new space. A dialog box opens letting you choose to add either a still image, some 2D video, a 360 degree video clip or a 360 degree still image. Once you have the initial space loaded, VR Studio allows a number of options. The first is to simply return to the project overview where you can load more spaces. The second is to modify this space, for example you may have loaded the wrong image or video. Thirdly, you can change the playback length of the space, that is, determine how long a still image or video stays on screen before some action is taken. Fourthly, you can add supplemental photos, video or text on top of this space. Lastly, you can add any effects to the background media. The first two options are self-explanatory, so we'll examine the others one by one. The initial direction you show your 360 degree still or footage may not be the direction you first want the viewer to see. This can be easily changed. 
Above the main arrow icon that pops up over the configure space menu is a small translucent eye icon. This is where you define the initial point of view. By clicking and holding when the pointer turns to a four headed arrow and then dragging, you can place this in a new position that will become the viewing orientation when someone enters this space. The left arrow you see resets the original position and the right arrow changes the horizon level letting you tilt the image. At this point, you'll also probably want to drag the main menu option to the same position to save having to mouse back all the time. Simply return to that position and click and drag. You can change the duration of the still or video and then determine what happens next. To do this, click on the clock icon and change the time for the duration by using the plus or minus signs. Next, click the back arrow icon, choose the FX icon, and you are presented with a slider icon and a transition icon. Click the slider icon and icons for three operations. Stop, loop back to play again, or play the next scene appear. In this version of VR Studio, you cannot define exactly which scene to play back by the way. It will play the next scene defined in the project overview. Now, Click the black arrow and choose the transition icon. Here you can choose between a fade or dissolve transition between the scenes. Finally, click the left arrow in the center to return to the main menu. Now it starts to get interesting. Let's add a new scene and put a walkway through to it from our main scene. The outside area of Tall Timbers sounds like a good place to start. We'll return to the Project Overview menu and click on Add New Space, select the outside scene, and after a few moments of processing, it becomes scene number two. As you'll have guessed by now, if in our opening scene we had told VR Studio to play the next scene after a predetermined time, this is now the one that will be jumped to automatically. To see that scene two is the correct scene, simply double click it. Click the back arrow to return to Project Overview. It is worth noting you can shift click to add multiple spaces in one go. Now to link space one, the main bar area of tall timbers, to space two, the outside area, first we make sure space one is selected and click the link icon. To connect space two, simply click the plus sign above it to link that space. If you now click space one, you can see the connection in place. You could now go back to project overview and connect as many other spaces as you like. For example, the kitchen area. The link icon is currently above the bar area, and we want to place it over the door that leads to outside to space 2. To do this, drag the icon to the correct position, in this case, the door in the far corner. Note the position is dictated by the teardrop icon, not the connection icon. If you wish, you could now change the icon's colour and opacity using the menu. To now jump to the outside space, click the space element for that space. Now you can place the position of the main bar element to its correct location near the door entrance. If you wish, you can also add a transition type, a fade to black, a cross fade, or a zoom transition to the walkthrough. It is also possible to change the order of objects in the background layer of the image. For a simple VR tour between different space elements, that's it. But we can take it further than this, a whole lot further. To allow even more interactivity than linking spaces gives, in VR Studio we can add text, images, audio and links to the outside world. To demonstrate this, next to the wine cupboard in the far corner of the main bar area, let's place a copy of the wine list. The idea is that once you see the wine list, you can zoom into it for more detail, such as the wines available and their pricing. First, we select the Add Photo or JPEG option in the control panel, and then choose the image file from our hard disk. Next, we move it to the required location and resize it to suit. Using other options available at this point, we could also tilt and rotate the image if required. Once the image is in position, we can then check and see if we can zoom in, and the text is quite readable. Let's now add some text above the link to the outside area detailing where this link leads to. Select the Configure Space menu again, and drag it so you can see both it and the link icon. 
choose the space add element icon and select text. You may need to zoom out to be able to fully select the text menu and its attached text box. You then drag the space element to place the text box above the door. This can later be fine tuned if required. Simply enter the required text, in this example, barbecue area. To change the colours and size of the text box and align it to the door, you can change the crayon icon and make your changes the same way we did with the menu image earlier, such as size, colour and transparency. Note, in this version of VR Studio, you cannot change the font style. The next thing is to ascertain what will happen when a space element is clicked. Do you want it to go to another space or go to a website, for example? Perhaps it is to load an external video file or even load a form to request more information or make a booking. Tall Timbers is named after the giant carry trees the southwest of Western Australia is famed for. Two of the biggest are the Gloucester tree and the diamond tree. The diamond tree is over 50 metres high and 250 years old, and there is a fire spotting platform at the top to which you can climb. We'll create a space linked from the Tall Timbers logo in the main bar area to a video of the diamond tree. First, we'll return to the project overview and create a third space by clicking Add New Space. Next, we'll select the video to be used. Now the video is selected, we can double click to see it. You may need to zoom in a bit depending on the video resolution and to get a more dramatic angle. Once you are happy with the video, we can return to the main menu, select Scene 1 again and create the link from the Tall Timbers logo. First we create the link to Scene 3 and then we place it on the Tall Timbers logo itself. To make sure everything is correct, click the link to jump to the space and play it again. The last thing we need to do is to tell VR Studio what to do when the video has finished playing. There are a couple of other options we can look at first however. If we click to open up our tree climbing space and then select the scissors button, you have the option of trimming the video start and end positions. We're happy with our video so we'll leave these alone and return to the menu. The FX button opens a range of options for us. Firstly, VR Studio has a built-in video stabiliser available, so that if your video is a bit on the shaky side, a simple click is all it needs for VR Studio to analyse your footage and then apply its magic. Another option allows you to tell VR Studio what sort of footage you have. Sometimes the program might select the wrong image type in its processing, so this lets you force the program into the correct mode. The last option is to set a transition type for when you exit this space and enter another. Available transitions are fades and dissolves. The second option is where we tell VR Studio what to do when this video has finished playback. Effectively, there are three options. Stop playing, loop back and start again, or automatically go to the next space. As we're in space three here, the last space at the moment in our project, when this video finishes, if we choose this option, it will return the viewer to space one, the main bar area. For now, we'll simply tell the video to stop playing. This is a good time to mention a couple of things you can do with existing spaces. You'll notice that the space label on our diamond tree video is called Climbing. This is due to VR Studio assuming the file name as the label when it is created. We can change this in the project overview to more correctly define what this space is. We'll rename it the diamond tree. Go to the project overview, hover the mouse over the space to change and double click the label. You can now change its name. Another thing we can do is change the order of spaces. Say we wanted our renamed diamond tree to become space 3. Just click and drag it to the new position. Returning to the main bar area, we can see that climbing is now relabeled the diamond tree. We've seen how we can link objects and regions to different scenes, but what if we wanted to link to an external website? Can VR Studio do this? Of course. One of the suppliers of locally made wine to Tall Timbers is Hidden River Estate, near the small town of Pemberton, 30 kilometres south of Manjima. Hidden River has a wonderful website showing the vineyard and restaurant, plus their own menu and other information about their wines. Let's place a link from an image of a bottle of wine from Hidden River Estate to their website. We select the image, which we placed in exactly the same way we did with the wine list earlier, click on Click Action, choose Open Website, and enter the URL. And that's it. Of course, they do need to be connected to the internet for this to work. 
In this version of VR Studio, an image or video or text can only have one link, but using image software such as Magic's Zara Designer Pro, it is easy to slice an image and reassemble as strips inside VR Studio, each with its own link. One last thing, what would a wine bar or a tavern be without music? VR Studio lets us add a soundtrack to a scene and then control its playback. This is a simple operation. Click again on Add Space Elements and choose Add Audio. Next, choose an MP3 file to add to the scene. Once the audio file has been added, we can click to play it and test. The finishing touch is to choose the repeat option and the playback volume. All that remains is to export our project. We can either send it to a mobile device that also then lets us view it in a dedicated VR headset, or embed the project in a website and use a browser to view it in virtual reality. First, we'll create a version to embed into a website. Note, you may get a warning that your project contains some files that are not compatible with all browsers. Click the tick icon to continue, and VR Studio will create the files and folders necessary after prompting you for a location and name to save to. You'll notice there is a file in the created folder called How to Embed. This is a text file describing how to place the embed code into your website that will activate your VR project. If you are unsure on how to do this, you may need to contact your website administrator. To create the VR files necessary for a mobile device, first you need to make sure the VRX player is installed on that device. A warning message will pop up telling you this. You can click this message for more information and you will then be taken to the Magic's website to download it for your device if needed. Next, you must have your mobile device on the same network as the computer with VR Studio. The VRX player must also be open on your device. If it isn't, you will get a warning message. When all is ready, simply click to transfer and create the VR project on your device. The time taken will depend on the complexity and size of the project. Thank you so much for watching our tutorial on Magic's VR Studio. To make VR imagery, of course, you need a VR camera, and the two we tested and used with VR Studio were the Ricoh Theta V and the Views XR. More information can be obtained from these websites. As mentioned, to get a trial copy of VR Studio, go to the website listed below and download it. And while you're there, I'd also recommend, if you haven't already, looking at Vegas Pro and the other products from the Vegas and Magix family. I'm David Hay from Australian Video Camera Magazine. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now.